All right, everyone, it's September 28th, and uh, this is uh, the update so far for the pepper growing. Uh, these aren't peppers. I just want to show them to you real quick before um, you see from like two months back all the way up till today. But I had gotten these two from Home Depot yesterday, and I was thinking I would make some kind of uh, trellis grow box out of them. Maybe like a foot and a half wide by a foot tall. <laughs> exactly the measurements of that wood right there against the shed. But I don't know yet what I'm going to do. Um, these are all collards. The fourth died from um, the day after transplant. I have another one, though, I could fill that in with. Um, nothing here yet. I did get the shade structure to go from there. But I don't. I only have enough, like, shade cloth to go here. So, like, anything here, I would have to plant, like, um, perennial native beneficial attracting plants or something like that just in this uh, unshaded part and then over there would be anything that's more sensitive um these are also uh broccoli and collards for my seed so this is all collards uh, and this row is all broccoli just real quick before going to the front a um, couple ground cherries in the front a couple eggplant in the back barbados cherries doing good um bought that yesterday as well from uh, Home Depot because it's a beneficial attracting and it wasn't too expensive. Uh, I just need acidic soil, which we don't have Bottle brush look those up. Those are really cool to attract beneficials if they grow in your area I got one more pepper there some other stuff another Barbados the tree I air layered from the front yard tree um, The ficus from when it tumbled from the last video the, it's starting out that the new growth is starting to look better So I did fertilize it today that one palm here another palm there and here's the wood um, for the grow box. So it's gonna be like this long by by that wide. And there's the, the posts I had cut at Home Depot when I was there to save time here, so. And so here's the front yard. I have some peas, uh, Lincoln peas are the larger ones. And then super sugar snap peas are the smaller ones. So I'll show you those up close a little bit here. And then my two big pepper plants are in flower. Black hob actually has some fruits. Uh, Bohemian goat, nothing yet, so. Here are some fruits, or not fruits, it will be fruit soon. Or vegetables or whatever. Uh, the peas. Here. And I just double hit this with uh, some spray for aphids. Um, that's gonna be in my, some of my videos, or some of the footage that you'll see in this video. But it looks like some might have survived on the stem. But, um, uh, this is CGN. I just fertilized this. Um, some desert perennial flowers here. Um, look those up. But I have a few sprouts I gotta take out. So there's one, two there. And I thought there's two more um, there. They're real small. So there's those. Uh, uh, sweet potatoes are gonna get harvested next month take all this leaf stuff out and compost it down um, this is uh, not doing too well either I don't know if I'm gonna keep this plant or not uh, for over winter but all the others are doing fine so this other CGN is doing good and then if you look at the trunk uh, the trunk looks good too Nice and thick. I'll give you a reference of size. I saw two fingers almost. Um, all this stuff looks fine. Some of my trees here, the desert trees. Uh, these are looking kind of dry. This one looks kind of dry. I might have to water this one. And then I'll cover, let me zoom out again. Cover all this stuff here. Banana's looking fine. Actually shooting up a new leaf again. I got another banana upstairs. This thing is looking better from when I fertilized it, so. Um, and then these are ahi charapitas. Uh, so one, two, three, four, five. Uh, Scotch bonnet brain strain. A couple of my crosses again. So this is BTR. Um, Reaper scorpion, which was the mother and then the father 
was a bird's eye chili. Real small, bushy ones. And then some more Jamaican hot chocolate and then some more of my BTR crosses down here. These smaller ones. Um, some tomatoes and some more ground cherries. Um, these are Urfa Bieber. I believe I have five of these throughout here. So here's one I topped. Um, there's one right there I topped too. So these, these pots are... I'm hoping to get a couple, maybe a couple fruit this year, maybe, hopefully. If not, I'll just overwinter them all. And then uh, this is the um, Fatali, Fatali Gourmet Jig, so I pulled a uh, tomato hornworm off of this. But the wasp are really good at cleaning these worms up. Only a few tomato hornworms pop up to be big ones, and then I take care of those too. So um, so these are all doing good. I'm probably going to overwinter all this in back because this one is actually finally looking so weed looking good now too and then the BTR this is the mother from the cross is doing good um, ahi mango is got a nice size fruit on it and it's flowering and then the thing though was well with that big tree gone now um, and you're gonna see footage of that because I didn't add it to the last video I said I would and I didn't so you'll get to see that in this video because I downloaded it from uh, my photos account and I'll add it to this video, so it'll be old, old footage. So you'll see the tree as it, as it, when it after it fell. Um, but I'm gonna over one of those. This uh, BTR two, another month. Get these all, these other brassicas all set out in the garden. Um, some of them are bug eaten, and some of them aren't. So I don't know why some are and some aren't. I'm gonna just leave the one that are bug eaten um, here, and I'm not gonna plant them in my garden. I'm only gonna use the better ones and try to weed out the weaker plants. Um, these are giveaways for people here. No giveaways. And uh, let me show you some stuff upstairs. Oh, just, just really quick before I go upstairs. Um, none of this really is fruiting other than the Pasilla Bajio. Um, those are tried and true for Arizona. If you guys live here for Phoenix area, Pasilla Bajio chilies are tried and true. CGN 21.5 too, but you got to start them early. Um, they're flowering heavily right now, but just no fruit yet. So if you look. Look at the structure of it. Um, Reaper now got the strongest one of all <laughs> the ones that I started, the one that lived. This will be the one I get seeds from for our soil here. Um, and then the, the one, two survivors uh, of the bird's eye, direct descendant of the father, which pollinated those, those crosses. And we have a few fruit on them already, as you can see. I want to pollinate to this though, so I want to do like um, um, CP115, which is, I think this is one of them here. Uh, I know this is one too for sure, CP115. I want to cross this into this this year so that I have CP115s mellow down slightly but growing hopefully upright on a plant that looks like this. Um, uh, a submarine there um, and I have more submarine which is a um, habanero variety uh, they're yellow like this look them up they're really 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 strong flavored citrus and I'm growing one two three four five six seven of them um, and then these are the seven pot Jonah uh, CP115 in the cup. This is a clone of the CGM. Um, this is opal basil, which is really dark leaf basil. I'm gonna separate all these out and just plant them in their own cups if I have if I have space. And then these three in the back here is um, Scotch bonnet brain strain. This is my cross. So my BTR cross and um, scotch bonnet brain strain um, this is milkweed which is a perennial flower beneficial attracting milkweed here uh, and then i have just a few other cool variety peppers that's a game uh, games cons brain uh so that's uh it for up here this is some of the soil that i'm mixing up now compared to what i used to use um, this has a lot more sand 
and uh, peat moss in it. So I find that if you use 50% compost or anywhere near that, it's 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 too rich for this hot environment because it it also gives off heat, and then the environment's giving off heat, and the roots just burn and. So I'm just I'm just doing it now. I'm mixing it now with just more peat moss and more sand. Um, the more the coarser the sand, the better. So volcanic sand, um, peat moss, and then some perlite, and then um, you know whatever else. But just the compost being like 20% or less within the mix. So so that's the soil. Let me show you the beds. Uh, this is just a quick bed of um, two eggplant in the back and two ground cherries in the front, and then coming over here. This is the Bohemian goat, a clone, next to the pineapple, and then um, blue Palo Verde. Nitrogen fixing desert tree is what that is. Uh, sparse canopy, so shade. And then just some eggshells I'm collecting, some banana peels I'm collecting here. All right, everybody, it's July 9th. The big eucalyptus in my backyard just, just got murked. The older, crappier looking one is still alive. Less wind resistance because it's had less foli foliage, I guess. But check out what survived. My super hot uh, bonsai, my daddle. I think the roots kind of got him. See the roots, the smaller roots. Two palms, um, and then that's a, a, a boot I moved here, the tall one there in the middle, and then the, uh, the almond, but they survived. Look at these roots. This is what roots look like on a mature tree. One come out undone and pops me in the face, so I'm gonna get out of the way. Look at that. So this line is done, whatever that was. Um, took out one of my dead palms that wasn't really gonna live anyways. Look at this. What's that all about? This thing was buckling, almost fell over as well. I'm surprised it, it survived, really. Um, one of the oranges, the other orange. The wind died down, but it's still pretty crazy here. So this is it, this is the size of the tree. Hey everyone, it's August 16th, and as you can see, you got some peroxide and some plants that don't look too hot. So what happened was uh, my twins came in the room and uprooted everything. Not even this tray, like more, more trays than this. And the roots were exposed. They took all of the plants out of all the, basically they just dumped it out and they trampled over everything. I was able to save them, but the thing is, is that I, I, carpet has to have mold spores in it, right? And so, a week, two weeks later, we have this. Let me uh, exactly zoom in on it instead. We have that. Now this soil is basically moist on top. And there's the mushroom um, there. I inoculated this with some good stuff, but I'm going to have to kill it all because of what they did. So what I'm thinking I'm going to do is take about the top inch off of this. Okay, and then treat it with the peroxide and then put another inch of, of, of dry soil on top to keep the top dry. So take an inch off the top, um, treat it with a half of that, half water, and then put another inch back on top of the soil and keep the top dry, continue to bottom water. While I'm here, I'm gonna clean all this out too. So that's what I'm gonna do today. So I'll show you when it's done. All right, here it is later, August 16th after I took the top layer of soil off. What I actually did was I took the top layer off uh, and while I was outside I wet it with uh, the peroxide and just left it in the sun for about 30 minutes because uh, UV rays also kill mold which is why you don't, normally don't see mold outdoors. And this is what we're, let me just zoom in a little bit easier to see. This is what we're left with in the soil. It is dry as you can see. There might be a few wet spots, maybe. Some of the soil still on the leaves, but.
so we'll see what happens. Um, and when I was taking the soil off, there were some uh, fungus gnats as well, which are dispersed outside. I didn't bring them back in, so good riddance. And while I got you here, the uh, broccoli and kale are doing really well. I did apply some eggshells to some plants, as you can see. The topped um, pepper plant there is, is sprouting out. Some more eggshells. One more thing, though, is uh, is this. It's my CP115. Uh, I topped it. It didn't do well. I think I burned it. Again, I burned the roots with uh, too much fertilizer. But there's growth. And it's green. So that's the update. Hey everyone, see this uh, little black dot here? There are a lot more of them and it won't focus that well. I'm thinking this is caterpillar poop on this leaf. It just shifted. Um, if you see that, look up above where the droppings are. There's another one. Let me see if I can find my finger right there. Look above where the droppings are for caterpillar. I believe those are caterpillar droppings, but I can't find the culprit. Either it cocooned already, it was like a medium sized caterpillar, or it's in here still somewhere. So just just uh, something I noticed. I mean, if you, if you see if you see a little black poop, uh, look up above where the poop is for caterpillars. Okay, I found something. So there's more poop, and right up above. Luckily, I caught it early enough. Check this out. Look at that. It is August 17th, and I have caught this early. Because this thing grows fast, man. Uh, tomato hornworm. So I'm going to take care of this little sucker. And I think there's another one on this plant, too. You can't, it's really hard to see. So you got to really look for the little ones. Because when they get big, it's, it's almost too late because they already destroyed most of your plant. Tomato hornworm. Um, hold on. Let me, there it is. Tomato hornworm. Hey, I don't know if you can. See that in the garden, but it looks like a predatory wasp. I saw three tomato hornworms on my BTR Reaper scorpion plant. It's on the top, it's going back around. Uh, I threw them off though, unfortunately, so it can't lay its eggs. But uh, I'm trying to track it, but it's kind of hard using my eyes and the camera at the same time. Landed on that one, predatory wasp. It might have found a caterpillar down there. It's a green leaf. Look, it's going in there real good. So it's on the caterpillar right now in real time. It got it. Tomato hornworm. That's the wasp that does it in action. Look at the wasp. Jeff Corn would do this way better than me. I don't know what it's doing with it. I would watch the whole process, but the video would be really long. So I'm gonna stop it here. So you can see it breathing in and out. It's a big one. The wings are about this wide. The wingspan. Look at that thing. Mosquito slayer. Slays mosquitoes. Probably other things too. Hey everyone, it's September 4th and um, I just cut off a lot of growth that didn't, that was either too dense, 
are just different color. That wasn't good, so kind of clipped it all off. You can see some of the flowers. Um, the leaves look really bad. But there's some flowers on it. Just panning over to the other side in the front. Uh, I did fertilize this with General Hydroponics Flora Series just because it, did, it just didn't look good. Um, and the newer growth, you could see, still doesn't look that great. But at least it's greening back up again, so maybe it's coming out of what it's saying. Hopefully it's like in time for all these flowers to produce. Plant here, uh, that's flowering. Same thing with this one. You can see it's barely coming in the flower now, so the splits are barely happening. Perfect time here in the summer. Um, I neglected these pots that were and the sweet potatoes because they got they got lost in there and I couldn't see them so um, but it's one of the survivors is, is flowering um, MA Vortex is also flowering splitting and coming basically everywhere here um, habanero is also doing the same flower thing too so coming up. Purslene. I'm going to harvest this and juice it all soon. It's a weed, but you can eat it. So it tastes kind of lemony. If you see this, and they grow little flowers. This is about to go to flower. I'm going to probably trim this all down before it does and just use it. Um, this is the uh, flowering Fatali Gourmet Jigsaw. See all the flower buds forming. I did just fertilize this one. Same thing with this one. It's also going into flower. I just fertilized it with, uh, again, everything with general hydroponics. Because it just didn't look good. And this one is even looking better because of it, too. I was trying to stay organic as much as possible. But it just, for some reason, the GH fixed it. So <laughs> I don't like, I don't like to, first time I've ever used it outside. So this one actually has really big leaves for Arizona grown with no shade cloth. Um, these are flowering. Also fertilize those. And then I just also trimmed this. And here's the trimmings along with a culprit here. What you doing on my turf, homie? What you doing on my turf? Hmm? He snuggled up there, taking a nap after eating all my leaves. But I did also prune this one down too, um, to let more air flow in. This is my bonsai. It's still developing trunk area. I don't know what I'm gonna do with it yet, so I'm just letting it all woody, woody up. It's getting really woody. I might take a, um, a razor to some of it, whiten it out to the cambium layer, and let half of it die out to get the old, the old, old look. But as far as flower production is concerned, last year it didn't disappoint. And this year it doesn't look like it will either. As far as flowers. So um, I'm going to let it, everything just bush out from here. Um, I just took out most of the big leaves that were like here and below. Most of the other big ones, unless they were crappy looking, I left on. Like this one here. So, but if they if they covered up a node, like something like they covered up something like this, I would normally just cut it off to allow light. So this will be new branches coming down the road. So yeah, these all look good for October production. So I'm thinking we're gonna have some peppers October. All right, I hit this up with some GH as well. And uh, if you look at the leaves, they don't look too good. 
that is like a whitish yellow like a real dull yellow coming through on that leaf the new growth questionable so this is uh, some super hot I, I don't know the name of it hey everyone uh, September 4th just wanted to show you condensation from my evaporative cooler got two of them one of them drips a good amount catching it in the bucket it's about four four and a half gallons and it fills it up um, say once a day fills it up to the top I already used it this morning and this is already from what what's in there here it is 648 and uh, normally I want to go and check the leaves for spots like this that could be an egg but this is just a spot um, it is September 11th um, also, I would check for droppings on the leaves, which I don't see any because these leaves are rounded. So we just roll off because above the leaves, normally there would be. Oh, look! Another tomato hornworm. Again, let's get this taken care of. September 15th, I'm coming outside to do some watering, and I see this, and I'm like, wait a minute. This plant looks too stickly. I'm like, well, must be a tomato hornworm. Where is he? They camouflage very well. And look. There she blows. Yet another. Look what they do. Look how fast they just eat. Got all the empty sticks on top of this plant now. Look at it. Like they just. So fast. This is a big plant, so luckily it's going to recover, but. I don't want you guys to see this, so I'm gonna <laughs> stop the video. Alright everybody, so uh, I got aphids here. Good. They're uh, there in other parts of the plant, so I'm just gonna spray with some of this. And I believe you can also get this by itself and it's pure um, concentrated, not, not pure form, but concentrated form, liquid form. And that by itself also kills aphids. Um, and you could get that at a cheaper, just cheaper than just getting it through this. So next time I buy it, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try this one. Uh, put it here, but I only filled it like this tall. So I'm going to spray. And I think there might be a tomato hornworm on as well. So I'll check for that while I spray. That's one of the leaves that's infested. I'm not even gonna spray this one. I'm just gonna, I don't know, compost it or something. It's probably predators under the mulch layer that'll readily take care of these guys for me. So, uh, also the date, I forgot to mention, is September 16th. All right, so I found a tomato hornworm and I just sprayed him just to see if it works on him too. So that's it there. They grow quick. The wasps didn't take care of them for me, so I had to do it myself. When you, I think when they get so big, the wasps don't get them anymore. Maybe. Maybe I'm wrong. Oh, look, there's another. Look at that. Two will devastate a plant if you let them go. Um, my head all over here, it's wet. I'm going to hit them again just to make sure. Or her, right? I don't know if these are... I got to check that out and see how they reproduce, but... It's eating right now, still. His mouth is moving. I'm gonna spray him again. I'm going back to more mechanically take care of these uh, caterpillars. I don't have enough plants to relocate them. This many tomato hornworms specifically. I, I don't have, man, I don't have acreage. So I gotta take care of them in another means because they're still eating. After spraying them right in the face with their mouth open, so. I don't know if you can see this um, coming from the evaporative cooler. It's the 17th of September right now. Going into my bucket. You gotta feel for just how fast it's coming down. 
free water. Still September 17th. I just defoliated a lot of good leaves. Uh, good healthy leaves off of this plant here. Um, to just allow more of the nodes to get sun instead of being blocked by those sh these sugar leaves. And photosynthesis to just to encourage more branching. Uh, still have a couple months left before I have to overwinter this plant here in Arizona zone 9. So we still got two months left. Easy uh, for this thing to get like yay high, which is what it'll do. So it's because I'm promoting this now. Uh, as well as this goat, or I don't even know what this one is. Um, that's Fatality Gourmet Jigsaw. Uh, this is CGN. Uh, this is a Bohemian goat cloned from the mother. Um, I just defoliated this as well. Just taking off some of the leaves to just allow um, just the nodes down here just to get sun to encourage them to branch out. So anything that you see a node on is uh, it's going to be getting some sort of sun. And uh, 2,000 or so par sun, right, if you're thinking like grill room equivalent here in Arizona, uh, the highest is like 2,800 on a spectrum, I believe. Uh, so things are fruiting. That's the um, ahi mango. And the BTR also defoliated a couple days, like a week ago. But there's still a couple leaves here and there. It's already actually off. See, all the bad leaves that'll just suck energy um, instead of uh, contributing. Or even if it's a whole growth tip, I'll just pinch it off. At least that's what I'm doing now. And there's my sun plan and the weeds that I'm leaving intentionally just as a chop and drop before they flower. And this is the purslene. I might juice this actually in my juicer. I have an Omega juicer for this, so. So MA Vortex is uh, flowering as well. I might also thin this one out just a touch. I didn't really need to. They grow thin enough as it is, almost like a viney nature. So I have a stake there and I can trellis more branches up. This one is actually dead. And, uh, but there's a growing tip there. I could eventually trellis up in a month from now here, or maybe this one. And um, this is some sort of scotch bonnet that also needs a little thinning just to expose some of the inside. Because it's going to be cooling. It's, it's cooling off now as far as weather. It's not going to be getting any hotter. Plus, we have two more months left. And having a branchier plant will, I would imagine, in two months would produce something. So... Just a few of the larger leaves. Any larger leaves on the bottom, I'll just leave. But that just exp opens up more nodes. So I'm gonna overwinter most of these survivors. Hey everyone, this is the uh, soil on the bottom. Uh, so basically complete sand and then on the top, there's like a, a, a light mulch, like a three inch mulch of um, actual compost mixed with a little sand and some perlite. <clears throat> and this is just uh, volcanic sand and perlite. So basically really low to no organic matter on the bottom and then the organic matter is on top. That way the roots don't stagnate with, with lack, of, lack of oxygen and just, just uh, the, the high temperatures of decomposition. So that was what, what I was trying to, to do as far as an experiment to see if uh, taking all, most of the inorganic matter out of the bottom of the root zone would help. And it, it kind of did because this was uh, struggling all year. Still struggling now, but I'm going to up pot it. So... This is going to be the raised bed to be on the west side, west facing side of uh, of my shade cloth. So it's going to basically go here. And I'm thinking about putting those two in there, but probably not. I don't know what I'm going to do with, 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 with I don't know what I'm going to plant in there, but I need a, four bags of sand, a couple bags of peat moss, a bag of uh, perlite, and probably a couple bags of compost to fill it. And I'll probably have extra, uh, leftover from that as well. But, that, but that's the... Uh, what I'm going to be doing. But, so let me show you what the results were from all of that pruning and, and all that stuff. So let me see. All right. So compared to what you saw in August um, when these plants were a lot smaller, you can still see the air through this. You see the light shining all the way through, almost all the way to, basically all the way to the bottom. So as the sun goes across, every note's getting light. But it's still full. 
I hit this one here twice with spray for aphids and um, there's two fruit on it now and it's flowering pretty heavily ah I'm blind there's, this one. <laughs> there's one right there black habanero no oh, this is from refining fire I'm pretty excited about this one so um, there's another one on here somewhere as well but all these other flowers are gonna develop fruit too um, and then the, the, just the heavy pruning that you saw and then the tomato hornworm damage uh, on this from earlier it's you can just see how fast these things bounce back so uh, other things that are working this season is uh, more sandy uh, soil but not as heavy as sand um, looking for the breathability of sand without the heaviness of sand um, so I'm finding that peat moss is a good addition for that which also lowers the pH uh, below you know 7.5 or whatever so when I'm watering with pH 8, 8, 5 water um, it'll hopefully uh, reach some kind of equilibrium that are better for the plant roots uh, so the sandy stuff is uh, the breathable stuff is what I'm trying to build now in the soil um, with low organic matter so it doesn't heat up in the summer with the summer suns infrared light as well as um, the decomposition which also creates creates heat the process from the, the, the bacterial decomposition process um, um, that is is what I'm finding uh, afternoon shade works <clears throat> in my zone 9 sunset zone 13 uh, the sunset zone in the summertime in the summertime you want to look at the sunset zones how hot does it get in my area and then for the winter how cold you want to look at the U the USDA zones uh, which were zone 9b here in the Phoenix area um, all the all the heavy pruning um, again it, it, it worked fine <clears throat> this bed is like half native soil half compost uh, a block that's maybe eight inches deep and then below that it's, it's, it's pure just normal earth um, from this bed being not ready you saw earlier um, and now it is we'll see what happens with these I might want to water these a second time today as well so, so far they look good um, soil shade um, smaller caterpillars the Smaller caterpillars, the wasps take care of, for the most part, larger caterpillars, I gotta just manually take off, like the tomato hornworms. Aphids, I spray for, so that spray you saw, uh, say for soap, I'll spray for aphids and white flies, specifically aphids though, um, but white flies as well. Um, and then uh, fertilization, the natural stuff just wasn't, I went through a several companies trying to find something. The, the thing that really I noticed that immediate results was when you watch this video, you seen that like it was scraggly and these, there was a lot of gap in between the plants, you know, of um, like a, a foot or two. But now like these are touching, um, these are completely touching. So their roots are touching too, right? So underneath this, their, their roots are communicating. I need this. Um, mineral I need this mineral I need this and then there's a fungi that connects it all together but these are touching um, these are not but the roots might be so so that works um, wind protection specifically around June July around July when monsoons come because the winds can get you know knock over trees and and they ravage they killed my <clears throat> The wind killed my uh, melon. I had a melon there um, that you saw in earlier videos. That thing died. It got whipped around by the wind and never came back. Um, this banana was not here in monsoon. This banana was for the most part over there in the, in the, like the under underhang, like really, really tucked in during the storms. And I would bring it back out because the leaves would just rip. Um, so wind protection is, is, is key. That's 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 it. Wind in the in the summer, wind protection uh, for monsoons and windy days. Um, afternoon sun protection, like shade around in the middle of summer. I'd say around 12, 11, 12 at the latest, just for those two months, three months, and then from other than that, um, uh, around one or so. But then in the middle of uh, fall through the middle of spring, we can you know just have a full sun, so it doesn't matter. Uh, that and and that's pretty much it as as far as um, <clears throat> fertilization from what I'm gonna do from this point on for anything that's gonna be fruiting sometime soon all fishbone meal so these guys are gonna be hitting up getting hit up with all fishbone meal for the rest of the season that's it 
Uh, if you have any questions, comments, um, let me know. And I'm looking at wasps making their rounds right now as we speak. All right. Thanks for watching.